Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to join you in this timely and relevant webinar series. I'm really glad to be here with the topic, The Power of the Spoken Word in the Family. My wife and I started on the wrong foot, and we're still leading imperfect lives. Time and again, we make poor choices. But by the grace of God, we're given the courage to bounce back and rise each time we fall. And perhaps this particular topic on the power of the spoken word in the family may be particularly useful to those who may have started on the wrong foot like us and who are still leading imperfect lives, making poor choices time and again. Because the good news is God permits all. Even tragedy is grace. We all can bounce back. Sabi nga ni Cristo kay San Pablo, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weaknesses. So ang gagawin ko lamang ay magkwento sa inyo, share with you some of the lessons drawn from our personal experiences, and most of these experiences highlight our weaknesses. Iba talaga ang lumaki ng may ama. My father died when I was just seven years old. He was a businessman and he was in the logging business in Davao. One day, at about 7.30 in the morning, sabi ng mga eyewitnesses, lumabas yung tatay ko nung kanilang ikanga headquarters. At pinuntahan yung, yung lugar na kung saan nandun yung mga tao niya na nililinis yung kanyang mga makinarya, makinarya ng laging. At doon sa area may dalawang puno. Yung isang puno na kahilig na na patungo sa bangin. Hindi na nila pinansin yun. Yung isang punong nakatayo na nakahilig kung saan eh, nagtatrabaho yung kanyang mga tauhan, nilagyan nila ng mga kable just to make sure na kung hanginin man ay hindi babagsak. But exactly at that point, mga sabi nila 7.30 nga daw, na andun yung tatay ko, meron daw malakas na hangin na umihip. At bigla na lang na yung punong nakahilig na sa bangin, tumayo dahan-dahan at bumagsak patungo kung saan nakatayo ang tatay ko. He was not able to run anymore. And since the machineries were running, yung sigawan ng mga tauhan niya, hindi niya nanadinig. Sigawan warning him. The tree hit him directly. Mal dahil malambot yung lupa, umuulan daw nung araw na yun. At talagang halos nalubog ang tatay ko dun sa lupa. Halos nalibing. Basag ang kanyang bungo. He died on the spot. He was only 37 years old. And I was only 7 years old. Ako yung bunso sa pamilya. May panganay kami lalaki. Then babae ako. Iba ang may ama sa pamilya. Naalala ko, miss na miss ko ang tatay ko. We had to relocate back to Manila. At tapos nakikitira ko sa minsan sa iba-ibang mga kamag-anak pero minsan may natitira ko sa kamag-anak ko na may kaya nakadadarating yung tiyuhin ko ingit na ingit ako sa aking mga pinsan dahil nagtatakbuhan sila ano, Papa! 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 Ako naman, ipipikit ko yung mata ko hahawakan ko yung braso ng aking tiyuhin imagining siya ang aking ama at nakikisigaw din ako Papa! Papa! We would walk that long hallway, malaki yung bahay niya. At the on, end of the hallway was the master's bedroom. Lahat sila magpapasukan doon. Ididikit ko yung tenga ko doon sa pinto. 
Madidinig ko yung mga pinsan ko nagsisigawan. Papa! 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 Miss na miss ko ang tatay ko. Ang isisigaw ko, tatakpang ko yung bibig ko, sasabihin ko, Daddy! Daddy, nasan ka? Ibang lumaking may ama. I grew up with mixed values. Depende kung saan ako naka, nakatira. One day, I was with a singing group. Meron ako nakilalang babae. Gandang-ganda ako sa kanya. Sexing-sexy ko sa kanya. Naka-partner ko. So, we would sing together, practice together, choreograph together until we were doing something far more exciting than singing. Nabuntis siya. And I was 17 years old. 17. Naalala ko, sabi nung isang kamag-anak ko, dadaling kita sa Amerika. Itatakbo kita. So you can rebuild your life again. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-asawa. Batang-bata ka. Ano ipapakain mo? Wala kang trabaho. Wala ka pang natatapos. Ako bahala sa iyo. I'll bring you to America. I'll take care of you. On one condition, sabi niya. Abort the child. Nag-usap kami nung girlfriend ko na ngayon ay asawa ko na. Sabi namin that time, we cannot solve a problem by creating another problem. And those were powerful words. And I remember nung hinarap ko yung aking ina, kasi wala na yung tatay ko, to tell her, Mami, may problema po. Ano yun? Buntis po si Alice. I'd never forget her words, no? yung mauna nanay ko. But I remember her telling me during that time, wag na wag mong tatakbuhan yan. Dahil habang buhay, yung taong makikita mo sa salamin, uusigin ka, sabi niya, at sasabihan kanyang isa kang duwag. Those were powerful words. But I was afraid. Umiiyak din siya. And sabi niya sa akin, ang dagdag niya, haharapin mo yan. Hindi mo tatakbuhan yan. Pero hindi kita iiwan. Hindi ako magbibigay solusyon dyan. Ikaw, haharapin mo. Hindi mo tatakbuhan. Pero hindi kita iiwan. Those were very powerful words. It was dark. It was black. The situation seemed hopeless. And I met a Catholic priest. Sabi ko, Father, may problema po. Ano problema? Kilala niyo po yung girlfriend ko, di ba? O ano? Bakit? Ano problema ni Alice? Nabuntis ko po. Hindi ko makakalimutan ang sinabi niya sa akin. And these again were powerful words, sabi niya. Panindigan mo ang buhay, paninindigan ka ng Diyos. Panindigan mo ang buhay, paninindigan ka ng Diyos. Pero Father, first year college pa lang ako. Wala na akong tatay. Nakikitira nga lang ako eh. Wala akong savings. Wala akong trabaho. Panindigan mo ang buhay. Panindigan ka ng Diyos. It was very scary. But true enough, by the grace of God, it's been 44 years now. We celebrated our 44th wedding anniversary last May during this pandemic. And looking back, still married to the same woman, gifted with five children and 11 grandchildren. May tatlong Amerikano, may tatlong Inchik, ang natitirang iba, Pilipino. Abay, may askal team na ako. But who would ever think? 
Who would ever think? 44 years ago na pinagpupustahan ako ng aking mga kaibigan. Sabi nga nung iba eh, huwag na huwag kang papakasal, hindi mo kakayanin yan. Sabi ng mga ibang kaibigan ko na nagpustahan, in two years time, pag tinuloy mo yung plan mong magpakasal, wala kang ang trabaho, wala kang ang papakain dyan, wala pang ang natapos. It will fail. Pero totoo yung sinabi sa akin ng pare. Panindigan mo ang buhay, papanindigan ka ng Diyos. What a grace! God permits all. Even tragedy is grace. That is why I owe so much to our church, the Catholic Church. Those were powerful words that have guided me until this very day. I remember nung ikinasal na kami ng misis ko, wala naman ako maibigay eh. So ang regalo ko sa kanya, isang maliit na chocolate, maliit na chocolate, na merong drawing, may picture, may picture, may picture ng Mount Matterhorn. Mount Matterhorn is a famous mountain in the Alps in Switzerland. Nung binigay ko sa misis ko yon, on the night we were wed, no? on the night we got married, nagpasalamat siya. She was so appreciative. At ang sabi ko sa kanya, nung binigay ko yung tsokolating yon, dadaling kita dyan. Dadaling kita dyan sa Mount Matterhorn. Imagine mo, wala kaming pera. Ang gastos lang namin nung kinasal kami, 800 pesos, kasama na yung kanyang damit, kasama na yung pinanghanda. Dadaling kita dyan. Alam niyo ang sagot niya? I believe in you. Grabe, no? I believe in you. But those were very powerful words no? that gave me courage. The courage to dream. 20 years later, in 1997, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary in Switzerland, right there in Mount Matterhorn. Totoo yung sinabi ni Pope Francis, no? We should dare to dream. May isa pang pangyayari. Sinundo ko siya. It was raining and she was eight months pregnant with the second child, with our second child. Wala akong sasakyan. Lahat ng tricycle na nakaabang para sa kanilang mga pasahero, ayaw magsakay. Bobos, baka naman pe, pwede. Buntis po itong kasama ko. Ayaw, ayaw kami pansinin. So we had to walk from Jupiter, doon sa kanto ng Makati Avenue, hanggang doon sa J.P. Rizal, kung saan may bangka. Kasi yung bahay namin, kailangan magbangka, tuhulo, then another jeep para bahay na namin. So sabi ko sa misis ko, walang gustong magsakay sa atin. And she was eight months pregnant. Wala kaming kapote, wala kaming payong. Sabi ko sa kanya, okay bang maglakad tayo? Sabi niya naman eh, kaysa ginawin tayo dito, magkakasakit tayo. Maglakad na lang tayo. But it was a long walk, especially for an eight months pregnant woman. Habang naglalakad kami, sabi ko sa kanya, ang sama talaga ng loob ko dahil walang tricycle na nagsakay sa amin eh. Sabi ko sa kanya, huwag kang magalala. Bibigyan kita ng kotse. Surprisingly, ang sagot niya uli. Tumingin siya sa akin. Sabi niya, I believe in you. Shocking, di ba? Eh, ito nga, hindi mo ako masakay ng tricycle tapos kotse pa pinapangako mo. And I hear husbands and wives, no? 
that each time one of them dreams or expresses a dream, ano sagot nung isa? Ano ka, niloloko mo ako? Binobola mo na naman ako. Pero ito ang sagot niya, I believe in you. Pagdating namin sa bahay, of course, ligo mo na kami. Shower. Ang ganda pakinggan, shower. Pero sa totoo, tabo. No? Ano yung shower? Tabo at timba. Pagkatapos namin maligo, sabi ko sa kanya, halika, upo ka dito sa tabi ko. Mupo naman siya. Sabi ko, imaginein mo, ito ang kotse natin. Yung kotse, anong kotse? Eh, ratan nga to eh. But she never, never expressed that doubt. Ratan bed na merong katerno na ratan chair na bilog. Sabi ko, imagine natin, ito ang manibela natin. Manibela ng ating auto. Po naman siya. Sabi ko sa kanya, mag-seatbelt ka, ha? mabilis ako mag-drive. Abay, nag-seatbelt naman. Tapos, giniginaw ka ba? Gusto mo, hinaan ko yung hair- aircon? Sabi naman niya, sige. We did that almost every night. We were laughing at ourselves, of course. It sounded foolish during that time. But we held on to that dream. And personally, I held on to her words. I believe in you. Nine months later, and I brought home our first car. After nine months, it was a Datsun 200C. Naalala ko, talagang excited na excited kami. Gigising kami ng maaga. Doon kami magkakape sa hood ng kotse. Nililinis naming dalawa lang. Kulang na lang pag sinipilyo namin yung gulong, sisipilyo hindi namin ang ipin namin. That's how we love that first car. A car that came about as a result of these powerful words that allowed us to dream. Kaya sabi ko nga, looking back after 44 years, no, of course, with the grace of God, we need to choose our words wisely, especially in the family. Nag-uusap kami ng dalawa, sabi namin, totoo pala, no? That the quality of the spoken word, especially in the family, shapes the quality of our lives, shapes the quality of our dreams. Let us be careful with our spoken word, at home especially. Yun ang sabi namin ng dalawa sa isa't isa. Proverbs 18.21 The tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. Look around you. Peste, leche, buisit, yawa. Look at the lives of the people uttering these demeaning and gutter-level words. No matter how high their positions, look at their lives. It is without peace without serenity, without harmony. Words can be used to curse, cast spells, hexes, but words can also mend broken hearts. Words can also uplift spirits and renew lives. If there's one thing that we have learned in 44 years, the ups and downs including poor choices. The spoken word, the quality of the spoken word, especially in the family, can shape the quality of our lives. Pero ang isang naidagdag namin dyan, hindi ito positive thinking. No amount of human effort will suffice without the grace of God. Kaya as we grew into our married life, nabago rin ang pananaw namin. 
ang sabi namin, the quality of the spoken word in the family, with the grace of God through the sacraments, can shape the quality of our lives. Sabi nga ng ating mahal na birhen kay Sister Lucia of Fatima, The final battle between the Lord and the reign of Satan will be about marriage and family. Marriage and family. There came a point after my early successes na nawalan din ng spasyo ang Panginoon sa puso ko. I became so driven, I was so engulfed with the pursuit of what the world describes as success, na nawala ng spasyo ang Diyos sa buhay ko. And in a mysterious way, He called me back. Mysterious way, He called me back. In a mysterious way, He somehow reintroduced Himself to me. I remember I was invited to deliver a lecture at USD, but somehow, barely into the one to the first hour of the talk, I, I decided to dismiss the class, call it a day, and promise them we'll just hold it some other day. As I was wrapping up my things, a lady approached me with a rosary in hand. Sabi niya sa akin, where is your son? Nagulat din ako, no? Ah, sino to para hanapin sa akin ang anak ko? At may hawak siyang rosaryo. Nagmamadali ako ang muwi. I looked at my watch. It was 5.05. Sabi ko sa kanya, ah, he's not here with me, but I can bring him next time. Baka namamasyal siya kasama yung kapatid niya. Then she just left. I went home straight. In fact, went straight to bed upon arriving. Then at about 6.30, the phone rang. It was a policeman on the other line. Tinanong ang pangalan ko, sinabi ko yung pangalan ko. Then sabi niya, Sir, pumunta po kayo dito sa presinto. Sabi ko, bakit? Anak niyo ba si ganito? Binanggit yung pangalan. Sabi ko, opo. May anak po akong ganyan. May nangyari po ba? Sabi niya, wala naman po. Pumunta lang kayo dito. Bakit nga? Nakakulong po ang anak niyo. Tinignan ko yung ulam na pinrepare ng misis ko for dinner. Ang daming ulam. Tinignan ko yung diploma, certificates ko sa pader. Ganun pala yun, ano? Lahat yun walang halaga. Yung pagkain walang lasa. May nagsabi minsan sa akin and napaka-importante ng mga salitang yun. And these were important words. Sabi niyo sa akin, tandaan mo to. And he was a very successful man. Tandaan mo to, sabi niya. No amount of success can compensate for failures at home. No amount of success can compensate for failures at home. Takbo kami ng misis ko sa presinto. Miiyak kami sa sasakyan. Miiyak kami dalawa. Natanong ko siya, sabi ko, ano kaya nangyari? I gave this boy everything. And during that time, he was my only son. Kasi yung bunso dumating later pa. Sabi ng misis ko, you know, Papa, that's what's wrong. You gave him Everything. Pagdating ko doon sa presinto, it was just like looking at him for the first time. Parang, parang ngayon ko lang nakita. I was an absentee father. Because I became so self-sufficient that I felt there was no need for God in my heart and in our lives. And I became an absentee father. I was never around. I was present in my business but never around. 
as mentor, formator, and more importantly, father. And looking at him behind bars, it was just looking at him for the first time. Iba yung buhok niya, iba yung itsura niya, yung pantalon niya. Where have I been? Yun ang tanong ko sa sarili ko. Where have I been? It was a terrifying experience. Eventually, of course, na ilabas namin. On the way home, sabi na misis ko sa akin, may pakiusap ako sa iyo. You have been a trainer, a mentor, a general manager. Marami kang tinrain ng mga managers, executives. And she was crying, sabi niya, pero bakit ito? Ito hindi mo na-train. Ito hindi mo na-form. Masakit, ano? It was a humbling experience. Pakiramdam, pakiramdam po, hinubaran ako ng Diyos. Sabi niya, may re-request ako sa iyo. Sabi ko, sige. Tell me. How would you want to deal with this? Sabi niya, una kong request, let us pray the rosary together as a family. Medyo mahirap. Executive ako eh. Alam mo yung ma-pride na executive. So because, sige, rosary lang eh. Pangalawa, sabi niya, Let us pray the rosary on a kneeling position. Nako. Mag-rosaryo, madali, pero on a kneeling position. Sige, okay na rin. Po sabi niya, pangatlo, please keep your mouth shut. Let your actions do the doc- talking. Makita niya na ikaw mismo ito masakit, ha? ay nagbabago. Mahal ko anak ko, mahal ko pamilya ko. I swallowed my pride. And sabi ko, sige. So we started praying the rosary together on a kneeling position. And in a very slow manner. Dahil isa pang request ng misis ko, hindi itong rosaryo na mabilisan, yung alam mo yung blah, 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 gano, Maria, na bobo, na gano, na. Hindi. Sabi niya, namnamin natin ang pagro-rosaryo. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Sabi ko, pwede. Three months, nagtadasal kami ng rosaryo. Yung mga anak kong babae, kasabay na namin. Pero yung lalaki, ayaw pa rin. Dadaan lang sa harap namin o sa likod namin while we're praying the rosary. Nagtitimpe ko. Sinasabi na misis ko, please. Please. Six months, dumating siya, nagdaan sa likod, di kami pinansin. Habang nagro-rosaryo kami, ang buong pamilya, di kami pinansin. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, pag ito hindi pa sumama sa amin, ibabalot ko na itong rosaryo sa leeg nito. Sabi naman ng misis ko, wag, wag. Let your actions do the talking. On the ninth month, I was late for the family rosary, so nagmamadali ako. Ang una kong hinanap, yung anak kong nalaki, where is he? Baka may ginagawa na namang kalukuhan. So, matakbo na naman ang imagination ko. Wala na sa family rosary. Wala pa rito. So, as I was looking for him, I opened the door to his room. I was shocked. I saw him on a kneeling position praying the rosary alone. Totoo yung sinabi ni Don Bosco. And we always remind ourselves of this promise. 
Sabi ni Don Bosco, If you want to see miracles, pray the rosary. Iba talaga rin ang pamamaraan ng Diyos no, para tawagin ako muli. That's why I had to get hold of this book, The Way of Humility by Pope Francis. Ang ganda ng sinabi niya dito. Kasi sa libro niyan to, sabi niya, The sinner can be forgiven, but the corrupt cannot be forgiven. So akala ko yung corrupt, yung corrupt na politiko, yung pala ang definition niya ng corrupt dito, yung self-sufficient person na hindi niya na kailangan ng Diyos. Kaya sabi niya dito, pwede pa rin itong mabago. Sabi ni Pope Francis, babasahin ko, no? page 25 ng Way of Humility niya. Generally, our Lord saves them, the corrupt people, no? through means of trials that come from situations they experience. Could be illness, loss of money, loss of loved ones, and so forth. And these are what pierce the armor of their corruption and enable grace to enter. Then they can be cured. Napaka-misteryoso talaga ng paraan ng Diyos upang ipaalala muli sa akin na Edwin, hindi kakayanan mo yan, hindi yan nakadepende sa kayanan mo, kakayanan mo. Ito ay nakadepende sa grasya ko. My grace. Remain in a state of grace. Grabe, no? Pero yung kasi ang challenge dahil ang ingay ng mundo. Kaya kahapon, while trying to prepare for, for this talk, naalala ko yung scriptural passage sa Gospel of St. Luke chapter 12 verses 16 to 21. No? Ang ganda nito. Ang ganda. Isang mayaman ang umani ng sagana sa kanyang bukirin. Kaya't nasabi niya sa sarili, Ano ang gagawin ko ngayon? Wala na akong paglagyan ng aking mga ani. Alam ko na Ipagigiba ko ang aking mga kamalig at magpapatayo ako ng mas malalaki. Doon ko ilalagay ang aking ani at ibang ari-arian. Pagkatapos, ay sasabihin ko sa aking sarili, marami ka nang naipon para sa mahabang panahon. Kaya magpahinga ka na lamang, kumain, uminom, at magpasarap sa buhay. Ngunit sinabi sa kanya ng Diyos, Hangal! Sa gabi rin ito'y babawi ang kanang buhay. Kanino ngayon mapupunta ang mga inilaan mo para sa iyong sarili? Ganyan ang sasapitin ng sino mang nag-iipon ng kayamanan para sa sarili. Ngunit dukha naman sa paningin ng Diyos. sa pandemyang ito, nagparamdam muli ang Panginoon. That as we work on the quality of our spoken word in the family, making sure that we talk about hope, we use words of hope and joy and peace through the sacraments, nagparamdam muli ang Diyos. Tumatawag muli ang Diyos upang makapasok ang grasya sa aming mga puso. Sa pamamagitan ng pandemyang ito, nagkaroon kami ng pagtatalo sa pamilya. Nung nagsimula yung pandemya, that was, I think, about March 16, sometime during that week, no? last year. Sabi ng mga anak ko, 
Hindi kayo pwedeng lumabas ni Mama. Hindi kayo pwedeng bumili ng gamot. Kami na lang. Hindi kayo pwedeng bumili ng essential, essential goods. Kami na lang. Kasi pwede kayong mahawa. Pwede niyong ikamatay ito. And we were bothered. My wife and I were bothered kasi bakit mas importante ba ang buhay natin, sabi namin sa isa't isa, kaysa sa mga anak natin? Eh, may mga pamilya rin sila. Bata pa mga anak nila. Does it mean sila pwedeng mamatay, tayo hindi? We know this thing is dangerous. We know this thing can take away lives. It was difficult. Dahil habang lumalabas sila out of their helpfulness and generosity to spare us from the virus, sila ang sumusubo no? sa posibleng disgrasya. And then sanay din akong nagtotok. I, I travel around the region no? in different countries. Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, China. In my present job. And I do talks. I participate in mass gatherings, in events. And sanay din ako mag-facilitate ng events. No? Minsan main speaker, minsan co-facilitator. Minsan organizer. But I love interacting directly with people. I love direct human interaction. I love face-to-face -face activities. But this pandemic, with this pandemic, biglang wala yun. Imagine walang travel and meeting people have to be, has to be prudent Pag bumiyahe, may quarantine dun sa pupuntahan, eh isang araw lang naman ang meeting ko. 14 days quarantine. Pagbalik dito, 14 days. You mean 28 days quarantine? For a one-day talk? How humbling! Sabi ko, Lord, kailangan mo pa ba ako? Do you still need me in your vineyard? As a missionary? What do you want? Ang pakiramdam ko, hinubaran ako ng Panginoon. Pati talento ko, naka-freeze. Yung contributions ko, naka-freeze. He just wants me to be still. I suppose, He wants me to rediscover the virtue of humility once again. The virtue of detachment once again that I may rediscover the importance of grace in our lives. Yun naman ang tinuturo ng simbahan sa atin, di ba? That free will, that man's free will and the grace of God need to cooperate for man's salvation. By watching my spoken word, especially at home and in the family, that's my participation. That's how we express faith in the family in cooperation with the grace of God through the sacraments. That our words may shape our dreams and eventually shape our lives. For better, for worse, in sickness and in health. One time, krumadwit na yung anak kong lalaki, nagtatrabaho na. Pero napansin ko, meron siyang iniindang sakit sa tiyan. Sakit sa tiyan. No? Pero sabi ko, uh, sabi naman niya sa akin, meron siyang pinupuntahan doktor, nakakausap na doktor. So, hindi niya daw pinapansin yun. Pero one day, it became so bothersome for him na hindi na nga siya makatakbo, hindi na makabasketball. Kahit maglakad, hirap na. No? So, he went back to his doctor was one morning he called me. He was crying on the other line. Sabi niya, Papa, liposarcoma daw. Ano, ano ibig sabihin nun? Cancer of the fat cells. Hindi pwede. 
Batang bata ka. Lika, mag second opinion tayo. So we went to see uh, Dr. Chan. Ang ganda, no? Dr. Chan, specialista ng Chan sa UST, no? A very good doctor. Sabi rin ni Dr. Chan, liposarcoma to. So ano ibig sabihin? No? It's cancer of the fat cells and we need to do an exploratory laparot- laparotomy right away. No? Anong pong gagawin? E di, buksan natin. Yan ang proposal ko. Then, tingnan natin. E paano po kung cancer po talaga? E then, alam natin kung ano haharapin natin. E gusto ko yung ganung approach. No? Gusto ko yung approach na prangka and upfront. Immediately, he was admitted. The night before the operation, the scheduled operation, sabi ko doon sa misis ko, umuwi na kayo. At kung pe pwede, pray the rosary, hear mass tomer- tomorrow. But during the operation, can you please spend time before the Blessed Sacrament? in adoration. Sabi ng misis ko, of course, that's that's the least we could do. Hindi ba kami pwede dito? Sabi ko, wag na. Mag-adore kayo, ako magbabantay sa ospital. The night before the operation, tinawag ako ng anak ko, ginising niya ako. Sabi niya, papahali ka. Tabihan mo ako. Lumapit ka dito. At nakaganon siya, no? Parang naka-fetal position. Nanginginig. Giniginaw ka ba? Lumapit ka, Papa. Sabi niya sa akin, napatawad mo na ba ako? A- ano, ano? Napatawad mo na ba ako? Grabe, no? It's been many years nung nakulong siya and alam niya na napahiya ako doon at hiyang-hiya rin ako sa sarili ko. Hiyang-hiya kami sa mga kakilala namin. Na actually mali, no? Hindi dapat reputasyon ang aming pinagkakaabalahan, kundi character. But anyway, dinamdam din namin sa pamilya yun. Napatawad mo na ba ako? Have you forgiven me? Sabi ko, magdasal tayo ng rosaryo. So we prayed the rosary that night. No? Tapos biglang titigil siya. Tapos, napatawad mo na ba ako? Sabi ko, oo, oo anak. Oo. Magpalakas ka. We'll get over this. Pagdating ng mga 5.30, dumating na yung operating staff, kinuha na siya, no? Nung papasok na ng operating room, sabi niya doon sa operating staff na may nagtutulak ng kama, no? sandali, sandali. Papa, give me your blessing. I gave him my blessing. After that operation, sabi pala niya sa akin, alam mo, sabi ko sa sarili ko nung humingi ako ng blessing mo, nung pinamano mo ako, ang sabi ko sa sarili ko, kung ito na ang huling pagkakataon ko sa mundong ito, it will be my Father giving me His blessing and having forgiven me. The operation took long, no? hours. Hindi na nga ako nakababa doon sa chapel because I was... I felt like floating. I was out of my mind, but I was holding on to a prayer book. Andun lang ako sa tabi ng coffee-making machine no? sa labas ng operating room. After several hours, lumabas si pangalan niya, Dr. Olalia, no? yung, yung surgeon. surgeon. Mas may dala-dala siya, parang isang basin with with uh, a mass, no? A flesh, a mass of flesh as huge as a baby's head. Sabi niya, ito yung na, nakuha namin. 
sa tiyan ng anak mo. Masyado ng manipis, so we had to cut several inches of his large intestine, several inches of his small intestines. Kasi pag tinatastas namin itong mass na ito, eh, kumbaga na nadadali yung intestine. So, pinutol na lang namin. But how is he? I mean, you want to see him? Opo. Eh, meron namang salamin no? that divides yung viewer doon sa pasyente. Yung nakita ko, he was sprawled like this no? on the operating table. It was like a crucif... It was just like the crucified Christ. No? I could not help that But ask the Lord during that time, what are you trying to say this time? What are you trying to say this time? God wanted me to realize the importance of reconciliation, the importance of forgiveness. Napaka-misteryoso ng Panginoon. No? Kaya, I could, I could not help but always come back and, and reread the words of Pope Francis sa librong ito. No? That generally our Lord saves them. Corrupt people, people who have become so self-sufficient that they don't have any need for God. Through means of trials that come from situations they experience illness, loss of money, loss of loved ones, and so forth. And these are what pierce the armor of their corruption and enable grace to enter. Then, they can be cured. So, hindi pa lumalabas yung pathological report. I flew to Cebu because during that time I was invited by the late Cardinal Vidal to attend the inauguration of Cebu Catholic TV Network. So I flew in. At sabi ko, Cardinal, ah, sa hospital pa po anak ko. Hindi pa po lumalabas yung pathological results. Pero pagdasal nyo po. Kasi ang initial findings ay eh, liposarcoma, cancer of the fat cells. Sabi niya, yes. We, we, I will surely pray for your son and for the comfort of your family. I will truly appreciate that, Cardinal, sabi ko. Nung gabing yun, hindi ako makatulong. And the following morning, the phone rang. It was my wife, no? And my wife was sobbing on the other line. Nako, sabi ko, ano na kaya nangyari? Why are you crying? Lumabas na, Papa, yung report. Ano ang lumabas? Papa, negative. Hindi siya liposarcoma. Ano? Ano daw? It was TB that lodged on the intestine na lumaki ng lumaki. And thanks be to God, mabubuhay ang anak ko. And again, I'm reminded by the powerful words of Don Bosco. The powerful words of Don Bosco when he said, more visits, referring to the adoration to, to the Blessed Sacrament, more visits, more graces. Less visits, less graces. If we want to receive more graces, We just need to visit Him more often. Words have power. Especially the spoken word has power. And it can shape our dreams and the quality of our life. And of course, the best way is to soak our hearts, to soak our minds in the words of our Lord, the life-giving words of our Lord in Scripture. 
again god wanted to remind my wife and i about the importance of scripture that as we try to hone the power of the spoken word at home and in the family he wanted to participate in honing this power that would uplift hearts change reframe minds rebuild lives through scripture one time my wife had a ruptured appendix i i almost lost her last 2008 but after the operation which was successful nagkaroon siya ng sinus tract yung sinus tract yung kung saan yung operasyon niya hindi gumagaling-galing hindi gumagaling no? parating may sugat bukas and so, siyempre, worried na kami dahil antibiotic kami ng antibiotic. Siyempre, hanggang kailan yung antibiotic? After one year, binuksan uli yung sinus tract niya. And, and the doctors were baffled. No, paano, paano magsasara ito? No? And one time, it was uh, Good Friday. One day, it was Good Friday. Nilalagnat na naman siya. And I was asked by the parish priest, uh, in our church, pwede bang isa ka sa mag-deliver ng seven last words? No? Sabi ko, eh, ano po yung gusto nyong assignment ko? Sabi niya, yung, today you will be with me in paradise. Sabi ko, sarili ko, tika, mahirap atang today you will be with me with para in paradise kasi father, yung misis ko ngayon may lagnat po eh. Dahil namamagana naman yung kanyang sinus tract, yung kanyang sugat na ayaw gumaling-galing from, from the appendectomy, no? from the ruptured appendix. Sabi niya, eh wala na. Wala na tayong panahon eh. Baka naman pe, pwedeng pagbigyan mo lang ako and right after your talk, you can go. Sige, sige po. So I delivered my talk. Today you'll be with me with, in paradise. Right after the talk, I went home. Pero hirap mag-talk ng ganun. Ano? Paanong paraiso? Eh, may lagnat nga eh. I immediately went home, took her to the hospital, sa emergency room, hoping may doktor. No? Kasi ang taas ng lagnat na naman. Pagdating namin doon, praise be to God, may nag isang doktor. At nung sinuot niya na yung kanyang medical robe, no? nagulat kami ng misis ko, nagkatawanan kami. Dahil ang pangalan niya, Doktor Paraiso. Truly God, no? Was very literal about this. Today you'll be with me in paradise. God speaks to us. His word is alive. He only wants us to cooperate with His grace through the sacraments. So that our spoken word in the family and in at and at home can help, help shape the quality of our lives. Choose your words wisely.